there. My name is Kelly Dale, and I'm the owner of Off the Beaded Path, which is located in Forest City, North Carolina. This is the first video for 2014, so I'm happy to see each of you once again. Um, for the first three videos of this year, I'm going to be doing some bead embroidery. Um, these are very simple projects that you can finish within a two-hour period. Now, I will tell you this up front, straight up. I am not an expert in bead embroidery, nor am I a Sherry Serafini or anybody like that. I just simply do the technique the way I enjoy doing it, because if I don't enjoy doing it, I'm not going to do it. So, some things that you see if you like bead embroidery and you've seen other people do it, some things that you see that I do may be different than others, but I'm just doing it my way. So don't, you know, don't get picky if you like somebody else's way, I guess I should say. But um, the first one that I'm going to teach you is what I call the carved in stone pendant. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you all the materials that you're going to need and we'll get started. Here is the pendant. That I'm going to show you how to make today. Um, I did a bead embroidery class a few weeks ago and this was one that one I helped a customer come up with and we really enjoyed it. So to do the project you're going to need an 18 by 13 cabochon for the center. This one is a tiger eye stone. This one is a cat eye and I'm going to be using hematite today. As you can see, it has a domed surface and a flat back to it. Some cabochons have more of a dome to them, and that's completely fine. You're just going to need something that has a nice flat back. And again, this is an 18 by 13. You're also going to need four. These, this is a flat back Swarovski rhinestone. This is an SS34. And you're going to need four of those. These are going to go one at the top and three at the bottom of my pendant. You're going to need a two inch by two inch square of beading foundation. Um, you can use Lacy Stiff Stuff. Um, you know, there's a lot of different brands, but it's a flexible product, but at the same time, it's sort of dense so that you can get, um, this is your surface that will stitch on. You're going to need a 2 inch by 2 inch square of ultra suede. This is a very t soft piece of um, fabric that once we finish with um, our stitching, we will attach it to the ultra suede. You're going to need uh, 3 yards of a 6 pound fire line and I'm using a size 12 beading needle. You're going to need um, some seed beads. I'm using a size 15 a size 8 or a size 11 and a size 8. So actually in the pendant to kind of give you an idea, the 8s are around the center stone, the 11s are around the sides, and then the 15s are around my SS34 stones here and along the edging of my actual piece. You're also going to need a bail of your choice. Um, I don't like to do stitched bales myself on something like this, especially if I want it to be quick. So you're going to need a bale. You're going to need some glue. I'm going to be using some E6000 glue today. You're going to need a really, really good sharp pair of scissors. These are actually scrapbooking scissors that I like to use, um, but they are really, really nice, cut really nice and sharp, um, so that's why I like these. And um, that should be it as far as getting started. So what you'll need to do, first things first, is you will need your beading foundation. Now normally, You'll want to measure out, and this is not a 2 by 2 this is just something extra that I had laying around. But normally what you'll want to do is find the center of your piece. So I'll lay my ruler this way and mark the center, and I'll lay my ruler this way and mark the center. It's okay on the white, you can definitely see it on white, but it's hard to see it on black. So I just kind of eye and not really worry about it. So I'm going to put some glue on the back here. I do not want to go all the way to the edges, completely to the edges. I just want to get enough glue so that my piece will stick to the foundation. And I want to center this 
on my beading foundation. If you purchase the kit, you'll have a perfect 2x2 two two square that we've already cut for you. So, and you'll want to let this dry, and then we'll start working with Once it. Once your piece is dry, you're ready to start stitching. So I've taken my six pound fire line and I've put a knot in the very end of it. Using my needle, I'm going to come up through, and it doesn't matter where I start, but I'm going to come up through the beading foundation and I want to come up to it as close to the cabochon as I can. I'm going to pick up two of my size 8 seed beads and I'm going to let them fall all the way down. I want to lay my seed beads down so that they lay down nice and flat up against the cabochon. But at the same time, I want them to be pulled back to where my thread come up from the base. Now I'm going to take my needle and close to the last seed bead, I'm going to go back down through the foundation and pull. So that when I pull, my two beads lay flat up against my cabochon. I'm going to go up through the foundation where I originally started. And there's no way to get this exactly, you just want to kind of get it close. So I go up through there. And then I'm going to go through the two seed beads that I just added. I'm going to pick up two size eights, let them fall all the way down to the two I just had added. I want to, I want them to go all the way down to the previous two beads and to be close to my cabochon. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go down through the foundation close to the cabochon and close to the size 8 seed bead that I, my last one I just added. So now I have four seed beads. So that they'll tack all the way around really good, I'm going to come up through the foundation between the first and second size 8 seed bead that I had added. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that through. And then I'm going to go through the three seed beads. Pick up two size 8's. I'm going to let them fall all the way down. Again, I want to push them up to the last bead and go down close to the cabochon. Now this time, I'm going to come up through the foundation between the second and third bead. I'm sorry, the third and fourth bead. Huh. Okay, so just like this, between the third and fourth, pull that, and then I'm going to go through the fourth, fifth, and sixth bead. So each time that I'm going around, I am picking up two beads and going back through three beads. So one more time. I'm going to pick up two size eights and let them fall all the way down here. Make sure it goes up against my stone. Go down through the foundation. So I've added two and then the best if you want to just count back three, one, two, three and come up between these two beads right here. So 
So I've come up between them and now I'm going to go through those three beads. And I want to continue and go all the way around until I have added size 8 seed beads all the way around. This is back stitching that we're doing and it will give you a good, stone, uh, good strong set of beads around that cabochon. So just go all the way around adding those size 8. Alright, so I'm back around and I have just a small space left here. So I put on two beads and I'm going to drop them down and they will fit perfectly in my circle. If, by some chance, you get back around and only one bead will fit in, fit it in there and don't worry about having to put two beads. It's completely okay with this project. Um, now, on some other bead embroidery projects, you would want to make sure that you have, say, an even number of beads. But for this specific one, you don't really have to worry about it, so that's the good thing. So, all I did was I anchored those beads down, stitched up through a few, and now I'm going to go back down through my beading foundation. So that at the end of this step, this is what you should have. You're now ready to add your um, flat back rhinestones. I'm using the denim blue rhinestone um, with a gray AB seed bead because it pulls out some blues. Now for this part, I'm gonna, I want it to dry a little bit faster. So I'm going to be using the Zap Gel Glue. And this is a really good glue. You just want to be careful not to get it on your fingers. If you get it on your fingers, you're going to have it just be stuck together and it won't be fun at all. So I'm going to put just a little bit of glue there on my rhinestone. And I want the rhinestone to go here at the top. So I'm going to make sure I've got it centered at the top. And I'm going to press it down. This is a little bit of a faster drying glue. That's why I like to use it so I don't have to worry about waiting as long in between my steps. And I'm just making sure that the flat back goes all the way up against the size 8 seed beads that I just added. So I've added one here at the top and I'm going to come straight below and add one at the bottom. And I'm going to add one on each side of the one here along the bottom. And you want to get them close together. So that when you complete this step, this is what you should have, and just wait just a few minutes and let those dry. As you start to work, once you finish gluing on your th four stones, you can go ahead and put up your size 8 seed beads because we won't be using any more size 8s. We're going to be using our 15s at this point. So I've still got my needle coming out of the back, and I'm going to come up through the foundation and I want to come up through as close in between the 8 and the SS stone that I can get. So here's a couple of different views of that. And just like we added the 8s, we're going to add the 15s. And they're tiny here, so you're going to have... A little bit of a harder time, but I've got two on. I'm going to let them drop all the way down. And I want to make sure when I add these that I've got them pushed all the way down to where my thread was exiting. I'm going to go right down through the foundation, right next to the stone, and right after the second 15.
I'm going to come back up where I started and then through the two 15s again just like I started with my eights. This pendant is very simple it's just basic back stitching. So those are now in place and I'm going to do just exactly like I did. Pick up two 15s let them drop all the way down. Make sure they're pushed up against the bead. Go down through the foundation right after the 15. I'm going to come back up between the first and second 15 that I added. And then I'm going to go through three fifteens. So just like I did with the eights, I'm going to be adding two fifteens at a time and then going through three fifteens. So two fifteens, drop them all the way down. Push them back a little bit, go down through the surface. And then I count back three, one, two, three. So I want to come up in between these two beads right here. One, two, three, and come back up through between these. And I'll go through three fifteens. And I'm going to continue picking up two and then going through three all the way till I get to the other side of my stone. I can't go all the way around the stone because of the size eights. So just continue around until you've added your 15s around the top stone. Once you've gone along the top here, then we'll stitch down and do the same thing here along the bottom. So it's completely okay that you've got all these threads back here on the back. And it's completely okay if I take my needle and I'm coming out up here and then I come all the way down here to the bottom. And the reason being is because we are going to cover every bit of that up. So while you may see this string here, you want when we get finished. So at this point, you're going to start out just like we did on this row and on this row. So if you're going to be coming around the outer edge of your stones. Once you've added your size 15 embellishment to the bottom, this is what your piece will look like. Now you have two small holes here. You have one here and one here. Originally, that doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, we can go and put a little tiny embellishment in that hole so that way it won't be just an open hole. So to do that, I'm going to come up through the foundation from the back and I want to come out towards the center of the first hole. I'm going to pick up 111 and 115. Let those drop. I'm going to skip the 15 and go back down through the 11 and through the foundation. So that when I pull, the beads pop into place and fill in that little hole. So if you like it, do it. If not, don't worry about having a hole. So I'm going to come up through the second hole here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick up an 11 and a 15. Let them drop all the way down. Skip the 15 and go down through the 11 and the foundation and pop those beads into place. Okay, 
Now, we're on the home stretch here of doing our actual embellishments. So, what I'm going to do is I want to come up through the foundation between the 8s and the 15s in one corner. I'm going to pick up two, two 11s, using only 11s this time. Let those drop all the way down here. Go back down through the foundation. Up through the foundation where I just started. And through the two 11s. Pick up two 11s. Let those drop all the way down. Pull them and make sure they go down there to the last 11. Go down through the foundation. And just like I normally have, I picked up two and then I'm going to go back through three. And I'm going to continue going all the way to the top crystal with my 11s. And I'm going to do two rows. So I've got two rows here. Then I'm going to come to the other side of the stone and do two rows of 11s there. So again, here with my dark pink, this is where we're at right now. I'm going to come up. And then I'm going to come back down, add an 11s, and then I'm going to add two rows on this side. Once you've completed both sides, this is what your piece should look like. I've come through to the backing, and I'm ready to tie this thread off. So just as I would with regular beadwork, I'm going to take my needle, and I'm going to come under the thread, leave myself a little bit of a loop, go through the loop, and pull. And be careful when you go under there and you pull. When you go through the loop, just kind of put your nail or put your finger right over it so that it doesn't pull super duper hard and break your thread. But you want to put you a couple of really good knots in there. And then take your scissors or your sharp cutters and trim that thread and your tail so that this is what the back of your piece will look like and this is what the front of your piece will look like. Now at this point you're going to need your good sharp scissors and the first thing I do is I'm just going to trim around the piece and just leave myself a thin border all the way around to get rid of the excess of my foundation. Now I'm going to start in one spot, it doesn't matter where, but you just want to start and you want to go around and trim around the edge. Now the thing you have to be careful of is you don't want to cut any of the threads that you might have here along the edge. So as you go around and trim, just be careful not to cut any of those threads along the backing. If it helps, you can lay or you can flip it on the back here and trim around the backing this way. And that way you don't have to worry about cutting any of your threads. But you want to go around and trim around the whole thing and leave yourself when you finish, you want to see just a tiny bit, but not a whole lot around the edging here. See, so I've got kind of close there, but haven't cut any of my thread, and that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to go around the whole thing, trimming out this piece of my pendant. Once I've trimmed all the way around, this is what the backing looks like, and this is what the front looks like. I'm now going to be using my Ultra Suede and my E6000 once more. So I'm going to open my glue if I can get it open. <laughs> there we go. And I want to take and start putting some glue on the backing of my pendant. Now I want to pull it 
all the way around, but you want to be careful not to get it too close around the edging. You're going to have to take your needle and get through both layers of your edging or of your piece. That means the foundation and your ultra suede. So you don't want to get too close to the side or you might not be able to actually get um, your needle through because of the dried glue. Now once I've got the glue on there, I'm going to take and lay it down on the ultra suede and just take it and push it down. Make sure you get a good adhesion. I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to trim around to match the black foundation. Once you've gone and let it dry and you trimmed up your backing, this is what it'll look like. You'll see your ultra suede now and not the black backing. The only way you'll see the black backing is along the edges here. I've threaded my needle with another yard of six pound fire line. You can use Nymo thread too. I'm not sure if I said that in the beginning, but you can use Nymo thread and I have a knot here along the end. I want to start here along the top edge. You can really start wherever you want to, but what I'm going to do is separating my two layers, I'm going to come up through the top layer so that when I pull the thread, the knot will be hidden inside of the layers. I'm going to pick up two 15s and I'm going to come back through both layers. And I'm going to come up through this second bead here and pull. From here on out, this is going to be brick stitch. I'm going to pick up 115. I'm going to come through both layers. I'm going to go up through the 15 that I just added. So that each 15 will sit side by side. I'm going to go ahead and take a pair of cutters and trim off the tail that I have where the knot is. And I'm going to go around the whole piece picking up 115, going through both layers. You want to stay kind of close to the edge, but you don't want to get so close that your thread will bust through the layers to the edge. And all I want to do is I want to come add one bead at a time and just go around the edging going between the layers here and then up through the bead I just added. You're going to do this all the way around the outer circumference of our Once you've pendant. gone all the way around adding your edging, this is what your piece should look like. You'll have to see this from the back, this from the front. Now I'm to the spot where I started. I don't really have enough room here to add another bead. So I'm going to go, coming out of the last bead, I'm going to go down through the first bead that I added. And then up through the last bead that I added. This will pull it together and give it a finished look. I'm going to go back down through that first bead again. And when I go down through it this time, I'm going to go towards the back of it so that I can go through the backing and then back up through that same bead I just came out of. So that way it anchors the bead, gives me a seamless finish, and 
I've got a almost complete pendant. Now I still have to add my bell. And if you don't like the look of, you know, a finding bell, then that's completely up to you and that's your prerogative. You can um, do your own bell however you would like. But um, I personally like the way it looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find two beads that are side by side here near the center. So it actually looks like this bead and this bead here are going to be very much close to my center beads. Um, and I think that'll be a good place for a bale. If you don't find two beads that are side by side centered, but there's three, then do your bale among those three beads. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in just one second. So I'm going to come down through the bead there and then up through the next bead. I'm going to pick up six beads and these are 15's and I'm going to pick up my bail and go right down through the bead right next to where my thread is exiting so that when I pull it makes my loop of beads and puts my bail right there at the top and that's completely centered so what I'm going to do is go back up through my beads and reinforce my loop of six once more. Now you kind of have to be careful you want to go through and reinforce but you don't want to be you don't want to go through it so many times that you're going to pop some of those little 15's so just be aware of that. Normally two passes through is plenty because this is not even though it has a good many little seed beads on it it's not heavy at all so you'll be okay. Alright I'm going to come up between two beads where my thread bridge is leave myself a little loop, go through the loop, and pull. And again, I'm going to put my finger on those beads and pull that thread. Alright, I'm going to go down. So that way it pulls that knot into a bead. Down and up here. Make myself a knot. Go down through a bead, up through a bead. Doesn't take many knots. And then once you're com done, you can take and trim the thread. And now you have the completed pendant. Again, this is the hematite with the denim blue. We've got a kit with the tiger eye, the cream, the bronze, and the gold. And then we have a kit with the pink cat eye and the magenta and purple. So as you can see, each one is exactly identical. They just look a little bit different depending on the colors and the seed beads that you use. So I hope you guys enjoyed the first video, video back for 2014. We do have all three kits available in our Etsy store as well as the pattern for this. We also have tubes of the Ultra Suede and sheets of the foundation for sale as well as some of our flat back 18 by 13 cabochons. Um, be sure and come back next week when I'm going to teach you another pendant bead embroidery here. And this one actually teaches you how to use a um, Rivoli that has a point back to it. So it's going to teach you how to use point back stones in your beadwork when you do bead embroidery. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure and check out our Etsy page, um, which if you go to Etsy, E-T-S-Y dot com, uh, search Off the Beaded Path and you can find us. Or you can check us out on our website, Off the Beaded Path Bead Store dot com. And again, you have to go to offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Um, so I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and we'll see you again for our next video. Bye-bye.